Hello, this is Siobhan from Stratasys Software, here to tell you about a new feature, which is how to generate supports for Origin printers inside of GrabCAD Print. This is only available in version 1.83, or from October 2023 onward. Before, you had to use some third-party software, like NetFab, to generate your supports, but now you can cut out the third party and do it all inside GrabCAD Print. There's a simple way and a more complex way to use this. Let's look at the simple way first. You start off in GrabCAD Print and choose an origin type printer. You can choose a template or connect to an actual printer. And then drag in a file to work with. You can choose an STL or bring in a native CAD file. Give the file a quick check for water tightness and printability. And now you're ready to orient the file. With origin printers, we have three new automatic orientation options minimum supported area, minimum height, or maximum models on the tray. Minimum height lays the models flat on the tray to save Z height and time, as you'd expect. Max models let you cram as many copies into that first row as possible. But minimum supported area is the really interesting one. Look what it does here, putting the model at an angle. I've always wondered why Origin and P3 and stereolithography systems always put their models at angles like this, and while researching for this video, I finally got to find out. What's happening is that the Origin printers move your part in and out of the material vat every single layer. So the more air you have exposed to the vat, the more pullout force there is, and the higher chance it could separate from the tray or deform. And the less air you have, the less force, and the higher chance of your part print success. Another reason is for surface finish. When you've got a face that's at a low angle to horizontal, like the 10 degrees on the left, when the slicer starts taking bites out of the part, there's going to be long spaces between the steps as it tries to match the desired shape. These long spaces look pretty rough. But when you've got something up at a higher angle, like 45 degrees on the right, the bites the slicer takes are smaller bites. This translates into a smoother part. Here's another picture that shows it better. While faces at zero degrees horizontal are okay, as you start going up, you know, in the one to 29 degree range, they start getting pretty rough. The sweet spot is between 30 and 60 degrees. The steps are very small. And then as you go from 60 to 90, it starts getting bad again, but not as bad as it would be between one and 29 degrees, right? So you want all your faces to be between 30 and 60 degrees from horizontal. That's why parts are tilted as they are. So that's why you often see parts at angles for origin printing. Now let's look to see how we actually make those supports. First, go to tray settings and choose if you're printing industrial or dental materials. We'll choose industrial. Then go down to your support profiles. We have some that come with the system, but you can also make your own custom profiles. So what do each one of the support profiles do? You can see in general from left to right, they're making the support structure thicker for the same part at the same height. In general, the stiffer printing materials need less support and the bendy elastic ones need more support. Here are the materials we recommend using for each support profile. Pause the video if you want to read more. And to get more specific, the rigid profile is the thinnest structure and tip. The light tough is thicker than rigid, but the same tip. Tough gets even thicker than light tough, and elastomeric is the thickest support structure and tip of them all. To get even more specific, I took a screenshot of every number in every profile, and you can see here with the red arrows which numbers are increasing from left to right. Pause the video if you really want to look at more, but in general, the stiffest materials need the least support. Always start with one of our default support profiles with you using a new material and see how it goes before adding the numbers on your own. So now that we've got our default support profile chosen, let's put all those numbers to use with some anchor points. Anchor points are a way of predisposing the support generation tool to do what you want and should be used 100% of the time when making origin builds, even though our workflow allows you to bypass it. So let's generate some anchor points and what we've got here are these orange triangles on the bottom. We'll see in the complicated section how you can edit and drag these anchor points around, but for right now, if you're in a hurry and want to do it simply, you just go down after your anchor points and generate support with the predefined numbers from our profile, 
and then it looks like this. Okay, and you've got a supported model in GrabCAD print. You can go over to the feature tree and actually see the support generation as its own element, and that's where you can delete the support and try again or edit the supports. But for right now, if you're looking to do something quick and simple, set the orientation, set the anchor points, and generate support. Now let's look at some more customized and complex ways to do this. A simple one is to make your own support profiles. Those numbers we saw in the beginning, edit them for your specific material or geometry. In a second, I'll also show you how to adjust those anchor points we just made, drag them around, add your own to support specific islands your part may have. And finally, making assemblies in CAD and bringing them in is a great way to stack the parts vertically to make use of that vertical space in the origin. Okay, let's do that first one. Alright, you remember the support profiles from before and how each one was for use with a certain set of materials. Well, if your material falls between some of the ones we have listed, or your geometry falls between what we've anticipated, you can go here on the left-hand side of your screen and choose Origin. There's all your materials, but also support profiles. And so you can go down here at the bottom, choose one of the predefined profiles, make a copy of it, and now you can edit the values in the copy. You can't edit the original to keep that safe, but you can edit all those same values in the copy. Again, I would start with the default profiles first, and if those don't work, then take this second step of editing. That's one down, let's move on. If I go up to the model tree and delete my supports, I can go back to the anchor point stage. So I'll select my part, go up here to anchor points, generate them, and what it can do now Besides the default points, I can hit control and click and add more points of my own if I think it didn't do a good enough job. So you can add more points in areas you want supported. You can even grab existing points and drag them around. Again, this is getting very fiddly, but if you have to control where the blemishes are going to be, where the little bumps from the support structure is going to be on your part, you can do this. Also, if you know a certain corner fails, you can add more parts there. Okay, so you can manually add anchor points before generating support, and you can see in this case, it'll be a lot more support than last time. When might you actually want to do that, add anchor points or drag existing ones around? Well, here's a real simple example. In the bad case, as it builds, you can imagine gravity pulling on this with a moment arm, making the part wobble as it goes in and out of the vat. Okay? Not hitting the same spot every time. That's bad. So if you ever see the automatic anchor point generator giving you a case like that, only supporting the local minima, you can mess with some of the numbers, or you can manually add and drag anchor points around to get the better or best case scenario for support. We call those stabilizing supports. Two down, let's look at the last custom way. If you want to print one of a part or copies of it in the same horizontal row, you can do all the same steps we've done up until now. But if you want to stack your parts vertically, like I've done here, you have to stack them in some sort of CAD program. I'm using Rhino. You do a save as STL, and when you bring that STL into GrabCAD print, it looks like this. And when you go hit generate support, it'll take a little longer than it will before. There's a lot more collisions to avoid, but when it gets done, it'll look like this. And if you want to see what that looks like when it's done by an expert in the field, here's a stack that Chris Lyons, our technical trainer in Eden Prairie, made. Chris actually has a whole upcoming origin support webinar, so check out the Stratasys webinar page to get even more information about how to stack and support these parts. And that's it. Three ways to make your supports more custom and complex than using the default settings we saw before. Of course, there's a lot more to learn about origin support generation, so if you ever want to learn more, contact your local reseller or give us a call. Thanks again, and I've been Shivam Ghosh from Stratasys Software.